Hello, Falcoholics. What is up? Welcome to another episode of the Dirty Birds and Brews podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Knight at Falcoholic Kevin, here to bring you our Falcons NFL Draft Day 2 recap. The Falcons only ended up making two selections on Day 2 because the team traded up to 35 uh in a somewhat controversial move uh i you know i actually like the players they took quite a bit i don't love the trade-up but we're going to get into all that on tonight's show and try not to take too much of your time because i know most of you are going to be trying to squeeze this show in before we get to day three starting at noon on saturday and of course we will be live on youtube throughout all of day three adnan and i will be there so if you want a companion if you're a true draft sicko and you want to be watching us or the draft, or both, through all of day three, uh, from noon to 5 p.m. or later, you can do so on our YouTube channel, which is under the Falcoholic. Uh, we encourage you to do that. It's a fun show. We we usually get a lot of interesting guests on, and and you know it's a little more casual, right? A little more, a little more fun. And the Falcons are making five picks as of now, so it could be eventful in terms of that. So definitely join us for that. But before we get too far down the road. We're going to break down these two picks the Falcons. We may talk about the trade-up, talk about how things are positioned heading into day three, which still has quite a bit of talent on the board, thankfully, for the Falcons. So before we get to that, real quick, I want to bring you guys a word from our sponsor, betonline.ag, folks. Bet, uh, wow. BetOnline.ag is our sponsor tonight. Thank you. <laughs> BetOnline is your number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoffs. They've got all the latest stats, news, and scores available as you follow your favorite teams on their path to the playoffs, to the championship, even if you're one of the lucky ones that's able to watch a team that's actually performing well. We'll see if the Falcons enter into that category this year or not. Uh, you can get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. So head to that website today, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, folks. Let's dive right into this draft class, which right off the bat, it's going to ruffle some feathers because uh, of what happened. I mean, you know, before I get into the trade up, like Ruka Roro was someone I did mock to the Falcons on my final mock draft with trades. Funny enough, they didn't actually trade for him in that mock, even though there were trades. Um, but, you know, Rook is a player that I really like. I like his fit for the Falcons, all that stuff. We'll get into him, but they traded up to four, they traded up to 35. They had to give away their, their second, third round pick, the later one at, from the Ridley trade. They did get a sixth round pick back, which is actually earlier than any of their sixth by one pick. So they're actually picking back to back in the sixth round now. They have three sixth round picks. Um, so we'll see what they do with that. Maybe they use that to move up somewhere else. But I don't think the trade up was necessary. They also traded up um, ahead of, Jer like, they traded up when Jer Jerzon Newton was on the board and they didn't go for Jerzon Newton. Like, I'm sorry. I just, I don't really see much of a chance of, of Rook Aroraro. As, as much as I do like him, outplaying Jerzon Newton, I think it's a really tall order. Um, and that Jerzon Newton is just ready to go, too. So I, I don't like that angle to it, obviously. But they do trade up. They have to give up that third round pick, which in hindsight, they, there would have been really good players available there. So, um, you know, don't love that. All that out of the way, because, you know, we talked about it at great length on, on the live show. I don't love the trade up. I, I think that was a mistake. But... It's easy for us to say that because we don't know what the intel was. We don't know. They, there was a run on defensive tackles right after the Falcons picked a row, row, row. So, you know, it's, it is what it is, right? It, you know, I can sit here as an armchair GM and say, I don't, I didn't love it. And I don't. And, you know, the truth is that we're probably going to end up, you know, being wrong about that. Um, <laughs> who knows? But at any rate, I like a row, row, row. Um, I, I do. I, like I said, I did draft it. I, I mocked him to the Falcons. Um, he was on my top targets list for day two. Um, I, I I like him. I, I think he's a good player. You know, I oh, he typically isn't there in the third round. When I did take him in that mock draft, he had fallen to 74. So I was like, oh, I'm excited to take him. He doesn't really get here typically um, because I thought the NFL was much higher on him. Didn't think he would actually end up being on the board there. But the story of Aroro is he's a super versatile interior lineman from Clemson. Played up and down the line. I think he played zero tech some. Um, he played one. He played three. He played four I. He played five. You know, he was all over the place there. I think in the NFL, he's a three tech or a four I. Um, you know, 
I think he could play some five tech sort of big end type stuff if needed. But, you know, I think he's a three, four defensive end. I think that's what they want him to be. I think that's where he will have his, his most of his play time with the flexibility to do a little bit more because he is a tremendous athlete. He finished with a nine, nine, two RAS, which is absolutely outstanding. He does have tremendous length with 34 inch arms, which is great for the interior. It's great in general, but really good for the interior. Um, 6'4", 294, got that perfect frame. I think he he lo- I think he slimmed down a bit for the combine to to boost those numbers up a bit, but absolutely outstanding uh, speeds. Right, one six seven ten yard split is incredible. Ran a four eight nine at almost three hundred pounds. That's nuts. Uh, hit a four five in the shuttle. A seven three nine three cone. Those are both well above. Uh, you know they're they're getting close to that elite range for his size and. Uh, hit a 32 inch vert, which doesn't sound that impressive, but that's 88th percentile for defensive tackles and a nine foot eight inch broad jump, which is uh, 97th percentile. This is a tremendous athlete. Also put up 29 reps on the bench with 34 inch arms. Let that sink in like that. When you've got long arms, anyone that lifts weights will tell you it, it's hard to, to get those. You got to really extend. It's not easy to get that many reps. Um, it's really it really goes to show you. Aurora is a strength maven. Like this is a super strong, super physical defensive lineman, relentless effort. Um, and he is a day one starter as a run defender. He can take on doubles. I think that he's a guy that does really well um, to just create disruption. He tackles well. Um, you know, I think that he needs to develop his hand usage. He's just so strong and athletic that I think he's relied on that a lot in college. Like a lot of these guys do. And he needs to learn moves. He needs to learn how to disengage from blocks. Uh, He does use his hands. Like he'll put his hands up. He'll fight. It's just like, he doesn't really have much of a plan with that yet. Um, You know, I think he needs to make sure he's playing in the three hundreds, low three hundreds, but I, I I like him a lot. I think he's a, a chess piece guy that can play a little bit, you know, three tech defensive tackle and pass rushing situations and maybe kick out a little bit more to like four eye as that, uh, you know, three, four defensive end when needed. Um, I, I think this pick in general, like getting the potential successor to either Grady Jarrett or David on Yamada, because the Falcons are going to have to make some tough decisions with salary cap going forward. And they may have to decide between those two guys. Um, I like Aurora a lot. I think he is a good prospect right now that can play on early downs. So he has that immediate starting potential and his upside as a pass rusher is really good. It's just, it, I don't know what we're going to get early. I don't know how much he's going to be able to rush the passer outside of his just athleticism. You know, maybe you rotate him in on third downs and just let him, you know, get after it. Um, pin his ears back and just go and, and maybe he can get some production off of that. But Um, he's got a lot of work to do to develop. So this coaching staff clearly has a lot of faith in their ability to develop him. But again, much like with the Penix pick, this is probably more of a long-term selection where they're, you know, at least with, with the Roro, I think he could, he'll definitely find his way into the rotation pretty early, at least as an early down type of guy to keep the other guys fresh. But, um, you know, as a pass rusher, he's got a ways to go. Uh, and I I think he can get there. I, I do like this pick. I like the fit, but definitely some work to do in terms of the technique. Definitely some work to do um, in terms of bulking up just a little bit. Uh, but again, I think he just dropped some weight for his testing. Um, strength is not an issue at all for a row row. So not super concerned there. Um, I like, I like the pick. Don't love the trade up. That's really the only thing because I, again, we talked about it a lot on the live show, just the opportunity cost of losing that second, third round pick, which, you know, in hindsight, it's like, wow, there were some, Pretty good players available at 79 that I would have loved to add to this group that really would have helped sell this this day two class and really take it over the top. Um, and they, they don't have that opportunity. So we'll have to see what they do on the rest of day three. They pick up that extra six round pick. Will they move around? We'll see. Um, but don't love the trade up. Like the player. Think he was worthy of pick 43. I would have preferred to have him there. But, um, you know, we'll see uh, how that pans out. But I, I do like the player. Um and then we've got next up at pick 74, definitely the most popular pick of the class and definitely the best value of any of the players the Falcons have taken thus far. It is Braylon Trice from Washington, the edge rusher. Uh, the Falcons do get a, finally get an edge rusher in here. Uh, Trice is an interesting one, right? He is... He is a kind of an interesting watch. Um, absolutely dominant production from a 
uh, pressure standpoint, right? He had 53 hurries. Uh, I think he had like 70 something, or maybe it was even 80, uh, like total pressures, um, you know, including sacks, hits, everything. Uh, and then the year before he had like another 60. So he, I think he is by far the most productive pass rusher in college football over the last two years. You know, if you look at his PFF stats, um, you know, 17.6% pass rush run rate, which is really good. Uh, you know, tremendous pass rush grade and true pass set pass rush rate. That's when he's going against tackles who are really in their pass rushing stance. And he graded out well against the run too. super physical guy. Um, this is a guy that, Actually has tremendous size, right? 6'4", 274, big edge rusher. Um, he is really physical. He is a straight line bull rusher for the most part. He's not necessarily a guy that's going to try to run around you too much. Um, but he actually did test out pretty well with the shuttle. So maybe he does have a little bit more juice to him um, than people think. Uh, but tested out well. He's great in terms of his straight line movement. Um, you know, I think... His overall explosiveness is good. Um, you know, maybe not as dominant as some hope, but I, I think he's got, he's just, I think, going to be a rotational guy. You know, I don't know that this is a guy that's going to be a full-time NFL starter. I don't know if he's like an edge. I don't think he's an edge one type of prospect, but might have edge two upside. But I, I do think that he is, he's a, like a full steam ahead type of guy. He super high motor and he, him and Aurora are very similar in this in this facet super physical super high energy relentless effort type pass rushers and those guys get a lot of production because of that um you know i think he he could be a really good i think four three defensive end but even at his size at 274 he stands up and rushes i think you know he could put his hand in the dirt too he's a guy that could do that and i think he could also lose a little weight and maybe get down, you know, into the 250s, 260s type of thing if they want him to stand up more. Um, but he's a super physical edge rusher. Again, I think he'll be able to play. This is not a, this is a, an instant impact type guy. Um, I don't think he needs a lot of time. Um, you know, I don't think he has super refined hand usage. He is a hand fighter, no question about it. He is just throwing the hands with guys. Uh, basically every single play the plan isn't like fully developed yet so there is room for more development there you know with his hand usage he does not have tremendous length um you know i think the length is is a little bit short right about the same as as latu latu you know 32 and a half inch arms or so um so that's definitely lower than you want um but i think trice obviously has the production i think he's got the build to play in the nfl um He's a guy that I like. I, I do like the fit here. I think this is good value for him. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if, if Trice is the one that actually is playing the most. Of I mean, he's definitely going to play more than Michael Penix. I guarantee you both of these guys are going to be doing that. Um, but, yeah, I I think that he is he's a really interesting player. I do like him quite a bit. Um, I'm excited to see how the Falcons plan to, to work him in. And, um, you know, this is, this is a guy that has a lot of upside and is ready to play now. I don't think his upside is as high as like, you know, his, his upside isn't as high as Rook. Uh, and it's, you know, Penix could potentially be a franchise quarterback. So it's hard to have, you know, more upside than that, I guess. But, um, I think this was a good value. I think I was expecting him to be picked earlier than this. He, I haven't actually mocked him to the Falcons cause typically feel like 43 is a little bit early and 74 is too late. Right. So the fact that we're able to get him at that time, I, I like that. Um, and I think it's, this is good value. Like the other picks for the Falcons, I know a lot of people view them as reaches. Um, I, you know, I think this one is, is not a reach. I think this is actually a very good, uh, pick here. I think he will, he will be able to play, uh, early and often, uh, and actually get, on the field quickly and, and help bolster this Falcons edge rush room, which we know that they, they desperately need. Um, so I like the pick. Uh, I think this is the best pick of the draft in terms of a value standpoint and the ability to impact the game right away. I just wish they had a second pick because, you know, you, you look at what happened and like it, it, so many good players were available, right? I mean, like at 79, you know, Jaden Hicks from Washington state, he's still available going into the fourth round actually. So he could still be there, but 
tons of wide receivers. Um, you know, I, I think you could have had a shot at, I mean, Javon Baker, obviously still on the board now, but, you know, would have felt better taking him then, you know, you could have added safety. You could have added one of these corners. Um, you know, I know Jalen McMillan ended up going off the board pretty quickly after 74. So, you know, if you wanted to get that Washington reunion, I, I just, the, the one thing I don't like about this day too, is that, is that trade up. I, I don't love that. I think that's kind of a, I just think they need the picks and I just don't like moving up there. I like moving up there. I thought it was going to be for one of these guys that fell out of the first round, like a Jerzon Newton. You know, he wasn't going to last. He went the very next pick, by the way. Um, and like Kool-Aid McKinstry ends up going to the Saints. I thought they could have been moving up for him. Cooper DeGene ends up going to the Eagles. Again, thought they could have been moving up for him. Um, and instead, they go up for Rook, who I like. And you guys just heard me talk about him. I like Rook. I think I would have taken him at 43. So maybe I shouldn't be mad about them moving up to get him at 35. I just feel like that wasn't necessary. And you gave up a premium pick to do that. Um, that now another team is using to make themselves better. Um, and it's, again, easy for me to say that. I don't know what the buzz was. I'm sure they heard that there was a big run on defensive tackles coming, which is true. Because it did happen immediately after their pick. Um so that it is what it is with that, right? Uh, it, <laughs> you know, I can't predict the future. I don't know what would have happened. He may have very well gone, or he might not have. But, um, you know, he's going to be viewed as a bust because that's just how these things – or he's not as a bust, excuse me, as a reach. He's not a bust yet. Uh, you know, no one's a bust yet. Uh, anyone that's a bust on day one of the NFL draft, day two of the NFL draft. It's a very depressing stance to take. So we're not there. Um, just – was hoping um, to have that second, third round pick because I think they needed the depth. Um, and, I'm, and I'm disappointed that we, we didn't get to have that depth. So, um, you know, it's nice to, to, to see the commitment to addressing the defensive line. I liked the two players they chose. I think this is, you know, helping to build out a rotation for the future. And the Falcons are probably going to have to shave some cap off of these two, you know, off of these rooms in the future at edge. They're probably going to have to spend more, but it's nice to have some players under affordable contracts. And, you know, I, I think Trice could be an instant impact guy. He creates a ton of pressure. He just doesn't really finish a ton. I mean, he had eight sacks last year. It's not like he hasn't, didn't get any sacks, but compared to the pressure rate, it's kind of a low pressure to sack conversion. Um, so he's a guy that may just be someone who creates opportunities for other players which I think that's probably going to terrify some fans, right? Um, but I think Aurora has a ton of potential. I can see why the Falcons wanted to move up to get him aggressively because of all those those things. Um, and I could see why he was viewed so highly. And potentially, there was thought that he could go early in the second round, which is what he did. And the Falcons were not even willing to risk him uh, falling to 43. They were like, no, no, we have to go up and get him. So we'll see. Time will tell if that's the right move. You know, um, another future focused pick Braylon Trice, definitely the pick that's more instant impact. Um, I like both of them. I, I think day two is definitely a better day for the Falcons to day one. It, it's tough. Um, when you got a first round pick that you can't really sell, that's going to be a rough 24 hours. Um, that one, you know, where you're not going to, you're going to have to sell fans on not seeing the guy you dressed drafted in the top 10 for two years. Um, it's pretty depressing. We're not going to rehash that on this show. That's not our job here. We'll save that for the overall draft recap. <laughs> coming saturday evening but um yeah that that's my thoughts on day two um like i said a lot of guys that are still available here um i do really like the way this has fallen for the falcons um i think that you know this is a good class uh and i i think there's still quite a lot of good players available um you know troy franklin's still on the board here uh, pretty crazy. Uh, I, there must be something going on there. And there was buzz. I know Aaron Freeman mentioned that that he had some kind of medical flag that came up, and that's what's been hurting him, um, which is shocking to me. Tight end to Jatavian Sanders from Texas. I can't believe so many tight ends have gone ahead of him. I mean, I know he's got his limitations, but um, in terms of receiving talent and production, he's by far the best in this class. So I'm kind of shocked that we saw, saw like Tip Ryman go ahead of him. Um, TJ Tampa, obviously, I think he's going to be one of the biggest targets for the Falcons going into, um, you know, round four. Uh, we got, I think, eight picks, nine picks until the Falcons are on the clock. So 
They're going to be sweating it out if they're hoping for him or like Jaden Hicks or some of these guys. Javon Baker is definitely one I would circle. They had done a lot of work on him. This would be great value if they were able to snag him there. And then some, you know, Malik Washington, you guys know, love Malik Washington. And then some of my other guys, you know, um, Kyrie Jackson at corner, love that fit. Uh, he would be a nice get here if he makes it. Uh, Malik Washington, you know, again, love him. Um, Dadrian Taylor Demerson at safety. I like him too. Um, you know, if they want to address the offensive line, Cedric Van Pran at center would obviously be a good fit and fill the dog quota. We know how important that is. So, um, those are the guys I would be circling, you know, knowing the Falcons are probably not going to take any of those guys. They'll probably do their own thing, but, um, those are, those are the guys I'm watching. And then we'll have to get later into this draft, uh, where the Falcons do have after the fourth round, four more picks fit, uh, uh, they've got the one fourth, they've got the one fifth and they've got three, six round picks all kind of clustered together, including two back to back. Um, so it'll be an interesting day three. I do wonder if we'll see them like move up from their fifth rounder with one of those six rounders thrown in um, to try to move up for someone or, you know, try to acquire an extra pick somewhere. Who knows? But um interested to see how this pans out uh, and how this day three, because this is a critical day three, which is not something you ever really want to have, but they really need these guys to come in and, and fill spots on their roster because they're not getting much from their first round pick for a while. So they, they need help. Um, so hopefully they can find some of it here on day three, but I think there are some very good players available still that can absolutely do that. Um, as long as you pick the right ones. Right. So that's, that's, that's the whole game. Um, but guys, thank you for tuning in to our day two recap here on the dirty birds of Bruce podcast. Like I said, we'll be back bright and early at noon for day three of our Falcons NFL draft party. A lot of fun on Saturday, a lot of fun on Thursday or on Friday. Uh, a lot of fun on Thursday. Uh, looking forward to day three. It's always a good time. Make sure to join us on YouTube on the Falcoholics YouTube channel. Um, we will be back, like I said, at noon. Please like, subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Check out the channel memberships. Check out the Patreon if you're a podcast enjoyer. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll be remiss not to say it. We've, we'll be donating uh, two $50 NFL shop cards during day three of our draft party. One of them is open to anyone watching the show. Uh, the other is for exclusively for the patrons and channel members on YouTube. So uh, definitely come in, check those giveaways out, check out the coverage, of course, because, you know, you can't can't get out of there without enjoying our tremendous coverage. Um, and uh, we're going to have a good time. We're going to talk about these picks, talk about uh, what's been a very interesting and eventful 2024 NFL draft. We will see you bright and early on Saturday, folks. Thanks again for tuning into the Dirty Birds and Boots podcast. I'm Kevin Knight. Today's show was brought to you, of course, by Bet Online. We'll see you next time, folks. Have a great night.